the reforms implemented by Alexander II were controversial. Not all his ministers agreed with what he was doing. Uh, at times he was uncertain, but there were also outsiders, um, intellectual students, who were also critical. Not always uh, that they went too far, but often that they had gone too far. Uh, the relaxation of censorship allowed ideas to spread more freely. At the same time, the growth of education and the greater autonomy of university produced a larger, more critical student body. The legal reforms also produced a new group of skilled professional debaters who were ready to question and challenge the autocracy. Meanwhile, the establishment of the Zemspa and, and Dumas provided a new setting for debate to in debate in the provinces. Therefore, a new intelligentsia emerged. Although small in number, these intellectuals proved influential in um, impressing for further reform, and in particular, great individual liberty. Their actions were not merely confined to books and debates. Some of them became involved in more active opposition, and therefore rose, posed a real threat to the Tsarna's regime. However, many of these uh, differed in what they advocated. Some ad advocated or uh, wanted um, anarchism. Others pushed for for socialism. Others actually disliked how things had developed in the West and wanted to avoid uh, what what had happened there. Um, these gradually become more radical, and. In 1866 and 1867, there were attempts um, on the Tsar's life. April 66, Dmitry Karakozov, a member of a revolutionary student cell known as the organization, tried to assassinate the Tsar as he was stepping out of his summer garden. His attempt on his life shook Alexander II, particularly as it came just a, a year after his eldest son, uh, Nicholas Alexandrovich, had died and his wife had fallen ill with tuberculosis. His immediate thought was that there would be assassin. Assassin was a Pole. When he heard he was a Russian, uh, and at worst a student noble lord, and threw him into greater despair. So it undermined his confidence in his reforming mission, and he became more willing to listen to the Conservatives and the Churchill, who were, who were urging him greater caution. It's in 1866 that we see a bit of a, 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 a turn back to... Uh, at least a slowing down of the reform and, a, and a, in some ways a turn to reaction. Uh, it's in this year that Golvenin uh, is replaced by Tolstoy as Minister for Education. Uh, Shuvalev is, is, is appointed head of the third section. Um, Konstantin Palin was promoted to Minister of Justice and police powers were increased. Uh, also the, the Bet Zemspa was re restricted uh, particularly by restricting the amount of money uh, they could they could raise. Shuvalev worked to strengthen the police and root out subversion. Uh, the third section became particularly active during these years. Even those who fled abroad were likely to be tracked down by its agents and brought back to Russia to face trial. Shuvalev worked and associated with uh, Palin, who used the judicial system to expose and condemn anyone accused of subversive political activity. In 1874, uh, Naradnik movement emerged of around 2,000 young men and women, mostly students. They were quite literally prepared to go to the people in order to sp spread their socialist views. Um, Narad basically means to the people. They left their homes, universities and jobs to go into the countryside. There they took posts in villages or poor areas of towns as doctors, teachers, labourers to share the life of the peasants. However, lacked planning or clear leadership ended in failure. Some of them struck down by, by diseases, others became disillusioned by the response of the peasants who were suspicious of their activities. Um, a lot of them reported them, uh, or a lot of them thought they were secret police and spies. Some of them even handed them over to the police. Um, there was a second attempt 
1876 to try and encourage a peasant rising, uh, but around half of those were arrested and imprisoned, and then many appeared in the in the show trials in St. Petersburg of 1877. Up to up to 1874, the revolutionaries had, had really achieved very little, but it's at this point that the government really shot themselves um, in the foot. Um, they held a number of open show trials, but this strategy backfired on the juries. You remember, created as a result of Alexander's legal reforms, acquitted many of those that had been brought to justice. In the famous trial uh, of the 193, um, 153 and then 193 accused were acquitted, and others were only given light sentences, sentences by uh, a sympathetic jury. The trial also gave them publicity, where they could speak and the public could learn about their views. Uh, in addition, the speeches of the defence lawyers were reported in the press. This provided useful uh, publicity for opponents of Azardom. So, frustrated, the government ruled in 1878 that future political crimes would be heard in military courts. Uh, there, the cases could be heard and sentences could be passed in secret. Uh, the day after the sentence was announced, Vera Zasulich fired a revolver at General Trepov, governor of St. Petersburg, Trepov, um, who was seriously wounded. Uh, at the trial, Zulich, uh, who was the daughter of an army officer, a member of Land and Liberty, uh, a, another revolutionary organization, um, she argued that, that she had acted out a deep and just sense of moral outrage. Uh, she had gained a great impression on both the jury and the public, and she was acquitted. Um, when the verdict was announced, there was tumultuous, tumultuous applause from spectators who represented a good cross-section of St. Petersburg society. There were large crowds outside as well, and she was able to slip away uh, to Switzerland. Um, Zensef was also um, killed in broad daylight in the middle of St. Petersburg. Um, the assassin was able to escape. Other acts of, of violence followed, including the assassination of Prince Kropotkin. And again, most of the per per perpetrators escaped. The fact is, and what worried the government the most, was that they these revolutionaries would not have escaped so consistently if any significant proportion of the population had been firmly behind the government. Uh, although they were probably not actually behind the revolutionaries, the mass of the people were either apathetic or sympathetic uh, to them. Eighteen seventy eight seems now like a watershed year. Internal disputes over methods caused land and liberty to break up in 1879. The organization divided into two groups, the Black Partition and the other group, the People's Will, which advocated violence and was committed to the removal of the Tsar. They had some success in, it, in infiltrating the third section, the secret police with a, with a spy. There were several um, further attempts on the Tsar's life in 1870. Nine, uh, a former student fired five times at the Tsar as he was out walking but missed. In 1879, the People's Will organized an explosion on the railway from Laverdia to Moscow but missed the Tsar's train. In February 1880, another member of the People's Will set up a charge under the, under the dining room of the Winter Palace. This killed 11 people. However, the Tsar arrived late for dinner and was unharmed. By 1880, it was decided that a new tactic was needed, um, particularly to try and isolate the revolutionaries uh, as they were seen as a minority, if they could be separated from the well-meaning liberals and reformers, they could be more easily uh, round up. Um, so there were concessions made, political prisoners released, press restrictions relaxed, 
hated salt tax was removed, the Zem Spa was allowed to express themselves. It was also agreed to hold discussions regarding uh, administrative reform. Uh, it was draw a, mo a set of modest proposals were drawn up which would have allowed representatives in the rural Zemsfar and urban Dumas to scrutinise and advise on legislative bills before they went to the Council of State for ratification. The day after, on the day that the Tsar saw these proposals and signed them, he went to the Sunday parade. He'd felt he'd been, he, he'd not been going to the parade the last few weeks out of his own, for his own safety, but here this time he decided he would do. He felt he was failing in his duty to his people not to attend. Um, as he returned to the palace, a bomb was thrown at his carriage. He was unhurt, but some Cossacks in his escort were seriously injured. The Tsar descended from his carriage, presumably to inquire after their plight. He was met by another bomb that virtually removed both his legs. He was taken back to the palace by his brother Michael to die. 